Thank you everyone for being here today. We just finished our Thanksgiving drive and we actually met our target of 800,000 and I think we exceeded it by a few dollars. The support of those drives is really crucial because the demand, particularly in Mississauga, is really growing. It increases every month and food banks were supposed to be an emergency situation. They started here in Mississauga actually many years ago. They're becoming a permanent necessity. The food prices are climbing and not in just Miss in Mississauga, all over the province, all over the country. Mississauga now has the fastest growing rate of food bank use in Ontario. The federal and provincial governments don't contribute at all. The Thanksgiving drives are no longer enough. We need some long-term solutions. It's unacceptable in 2024 that people have to use food banks. They should not be a permanent part of our community in a country as, prom as prosperous as Canada. I'm very proud of Mississauga Council today for declaring a food, um, a food emergency here in our, uh, our province and our city, and we're hoping the rest of the province pays attention. There are some mayors, apparently, in some parts of Ontario that won't even meet with the food banks. It's really important that we all work together because the only way you're going to press the federal government and the provincial government in making something happen is we all have to work together. Premier Ford is sending out $200 checks. I've already informed my kids and my grandkids that they're endorsing the back of those checks and they're sending them to Mississauga Food Bank. Lots of people need those $200 checks and they will be happy to receive them, be able to do a grocery shopping for a week or two. But the rest of us who don't need them should be giving them to our food banks. But that's only a start. I think we need serious funding from the federal and provincial governments. And I'm going to point to Megan to come up because she knows far more about this. She works her heart out for us and has done so for years. Please welcome her. Well, thank you, Mayor Parrish, for speaking to the struggles that our city is facing and how Food Banks Mississauga has been working to fill the gaps. I've been working at Food Banks Mississauga for 15 years, and never before have I seen the level of food insecurity and food bank usage that we're experiencing now. Mississauga saw the largest escalation in food bank visits in all of Ontario. Our neighbours are struggling. Over 56,000 of them here in Mississauga used a food bank in the last year. As Mayor Parrish mentioned, that's one in 13 Mississauga residents who now use a food bank. Back in 2019, it was one in 37. But these numbers represent people. They represent our neighbours, like Michelle, who's a single parent with a household of three to take care of. She used to be employed as a security guard, but hasn't been able to work due to health issues. And like many of our neighbors, she now relies on the Ontario Disability Support Program to try and make ends meet. But social assistance programs have not kept up with the cost of living, and folks like Michelle get stuck in a cycle of poverty that they can't break out of. Now, we're desperately trying to keep up with the ever-growing demand to provide food to folks like Michelle. And I'll be honest, it has not been easy. We've seen a 78% increase in food bank visits in the last year. However, despite our best efforts, we've only been able to increase fundraising by 2%. We are facing increased challenges in securing significant donations at a time when donations to food security organizations are needed more than ever. Some food bank donors are now even telling us they need to use the food bank as a food bank client. This doesn't happen in isolation. The uh, Ontario Nonprofit Network released a state of the sector report last month. Data from 1,000 Ontario nonprofits shows stagnant and declining financial resources along with escalating demand. 31% of Ontario nonprofits are taking from their reserve funds, which is just as high as it was during the pandemic. Food insecurity and demand for nonprofit services are far worse than they even were at the height of the pandemic. And so these issues have affected us at Food Banks Mississauga, including the, the instability of financial resources and increased reserve use. You see, as Mayor Parrish said, we only receive 1% of our total resources required from government, and that's from the region of Peel. The lack of provincial and federal funding for food banks and for people facing food insecurity means that we face an uphill battle as our neighbors fall further and further behind. How can our governments rely on and thank us as food banks for meeting the needs of our community without ensuring we have the resources to do it? Who will ensure our neighbors have food if food banks can't keep up? 
So for all these reasons, the motion that the city of Mississauga passed today to declare food insecurity an emergency is monumental. It means that we as a city recognize that food insecurity is not a temporary problem. It's been affecting too many neighbors for too long and donations and food drives aren't gonna solve this problem for the long term. This declaration means we're standing up and uniting to ring those alarm bells even louder to say that food insecurity has gone beyond a crisis and is an emergency. And we refuse to stand by and let it continue. So what am I asking of my fellow Mississauga residents? Yes, I am asking you to reach in your wallets and make a cash donation to ensure your neighbors have food today. Food Banks Mississauga can only operate thanks to your generosity. Every $20 you give allows one person a monthly visit to a food bank to get over $100 worth of food. But I have a second request. Our neighbors need government action, a groceries and essentials benefit, as introduced by Food Banks Canada. It would be the best way to provide income support to people right now, and it would work quickly because the structure's already in place. They could adjust the GST HST credit, and the benefit would ensure extra support gets to people so they don't fall further into poverty or even into homelessness. Please join us and tell your MP that we're tired of our neighbors struggling, and we're tired of inaction. The people in Mississauga deserve better. You can visit our website and send a message to your MP and stand with us as we say we will never just shrug and let our, our neighbors accept poverty. Your donation will make sure neighbors have food today. Your message to your MP will make sure all our neighbors have their right to food met for tomorrow. Now, addressing hunger in our community takes all of us, including thousands of dedicated volunteers. And I'm so pleased to have one of our volunteers here with us. I'll turn things over now to Anna Maria Batista, one of our longtime volunteer team members at Food Banks Mississauga. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Mayor Parrish, Megan. It's a pleasure to be here, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Anna Maria. I've been a, a volunteer with Food Banks Mississauga for seven years. I have different roles at Food Banks Mississauga. I'm a lead food sorter. I educate our volunteers on how to correctly check expiry dates of food items and put them in the correct food categories. I'm also a donor ambassador. I call and thank our donors for their monetary donations to Food Banks Mississauga. And I'm also a lead at the grocery stores during our Thanksgiving, Christmas, and spring food drives. And I support our volunteers when we're asking customers for monetary donations. It is disheartening to be at the grocery store year after year, and I've been doing this for seven years, and asking our customers as they come out for donations and hearing no thank you not today people cannot afford it and I've seen this firsthand through our warehouse we are packing up food and as quickly as we pack it up it goes out the door to our agencies where people will go and get their food and it's just not people not working it's families where the mother and father are working but they can't make ends meet. They've got utilities to pay, mortgages to pay. And then at the end of the day, they don't have enough food. It's unbelievable to me that a city as rich as Mississauga doesn't have food for a lot of their residents. From the person um, that was in their car, living in their car, knocked on our door, and we had to give them an emergency box of food to last them until they went to one of our agencies. A food is a necessity just like the clothing on our back. And if I may share a story with you, um, it was a couple of years ago, it was December. I was walking my dog and I was passing St. Mary's Food Bank, which is one of the Food Banks Mississauga's agencies where people in the area, if they need food, will go there. Festive season, everybody's spending hundreds of dollars on uh, you know, presents, food, and everything. And I look in the door, and there I see a young woman waiting for her food. And I'm thinking, something is wrong. And this was two years ago, ladies and gentlemen, and it has stayed with me, that image of looking at that young girl waiting for her food. I get emotional thinking about it because no one should have to decide about dressing themselves or having food on the table. 
we a lot of us, a lot of the uh, residents rely on the food bank. And like Mayor Parrish said, food banks were only supposed to be temporary. Unfortunately, I see them as long term until we get to the root of the problem. Thank you very much. Thank you very much <clears throat> to all of you, all of our presenters. We're now going to take questions. We have a number of media outlets in the room, and so we're going to start there, and then we're going to go to our online questions. So I will look to the media in the room and the cameras, as well as the journalists here, and if you want to flag me down, we can go one question and one follow-up. Steve Cornwell from the Mississauga News. Good afternoon. Thanks for having us here. Uh, Mayor Parrish, uh, you would... Um, uh, obviously, uh, maybe before the, uh, you were elected as well, you and other city officials have um, highlighted uh, a big shortfall in uh, funding for appeal services, uh, social services from the province and maybe the federal government as well uh, slightly. But uh, can you kind of take us through where those discussions are with um, the premier and the, um, and the province? Because uh, we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars that's been highlighted across Mississauga and Brampton. But because um, it seems like... Um, for issues like poverty and issues like uh, hunger, there seems to be a significant shortfall of funding for that. We used to have a campaign called Fair Share for Peel. Um, that lasted about 20 years and accomplished nothing. We now have a group called Metamorphosis. There's about 100 nonprofit organizations that are being funded by the federal, or I, I'm sorry, by the region. And they're putting on a full court press with our assistance. We're short every year in Peel about $850 million for social programs. Uh, Toronto gets their fair share, uh, Ottawa gets their fair share, but we don't. Uh, we are considered to be a wealthy suburb of Toronto, which we're not. We're a, a thriving city with our own social problems. So we're, we're working on it hard. So far, nothing optimistic. What would be the, uh, obviously there's a specific kind of funding request uh, that's being discussed today. Uh, what would you say is the, is the is the priority of the city's kind of advocacy on this if, if the money itself is not going to come from the municipality? Well, I haven't given up on, on getting money from the province for the municipality, but we have ODSP recipients. We have people who are on all, all kinds of uh, supplemental programs, and they're not getting enough. They have A lot of them haven't had raises in 10 years. So those are the programs that the province can step in and increase, and people can fend for themselves, and they won't need the food bank. Thank you. We're going to go next to CTV. Hi, Raheem with CTV. Uh, for Mayor Parrish, you said that today you'll be declaring a food emergency. What exactly does that mean other than just on paper? Well, it's not just on paper. I think it, it accelerates the fundraising capabilities. We get the messages out. At our tree lighting ceremony this year, we're going to have the food bank there. We're going to have their billboards up. We're going to have Megan speak. We're going to try to get it through to all our population that it is a crucial emergency and everybody has to pitch in. There's a lot of talk right now about what can be done on the provincial and the federal level. Level Yesterday we heard from the Toronto Food Banks talk about from a municipal level, they're calling for uh, affordability where rent is no more than 30% of a renter's income. Is that something the city of Mississauga is considering? The city of Mississauga has had a task force for the last three months with about 30 developers and lots of interested participants to look at how we can streamline our process, cut the costs of getting all the documents you need to start a building and finding subsidies with DCs and other financial strains during these times with high interest rates. And the report is coming out in January and I think you're gonna be really surprised at how much work we've done and the cooperation. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Over to CB24. Hi, Mayor Parrish, C.J. Liu with CP24. Um, you would like to see more funding from the federal and provincial government. Can you get into specifics of how much you would like or, or specific help that you would like to see? Well, it's $850 million a year. So we're going to be generous and say, can you phase it in over three years? We'd want to hurt the uh, budget. They, we want to leave money there so they can send out the $200 checks. But it would be nice to phase it in over three years. And is there anything uh, you would like to see done in the short term as you wait for possible funding from the government? Um, anything you would like to do in the short term to address this food crisis? Well, in the short term, the people of Mississauga come through. We're doing our Christmas fundraiser right now, holiday fundraiser, 
and uh, our, our, our citizens who can afford it come through, our corporations come through, and us, we're going to have to get the money. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Over to the pointer, Paige. Hi, Mayor Parrish. Uh, Hi. So last year when you were sitting in City Hall as a counselor, you had spoke about looking at donating land to the food bank to help alleviate that, I think it is, million dollar a year cost in rent. Is that something you're still pursuing, and what would that look like? We are pursuing it. Unfortunately, the food bank has had to dip into its building fund just to provide food for people. Uh, so as their building fund diminishes, we're in a position where they can't really start building. But we have lots of land owned by the region right up on Derry and here Ontario, which would make an excellent food bank. Then you're not paying for land, you're just paying for the building. It's nice and central. It's right between Mississauga and Brampton. It's a great location. Um, and then just to follow up, and this is something you can speak to as well as maybe Megan, if you're able to come up as well. Uh, how does the fact that you're standing here today surrounded by your colleagues and elected officials Declaring food, secu food insecurity and emergency kind of speak to how dire the scale has become with this issue. Well, I worked with Megan on the food drive for Thanksgiving, and we were on pins and needles that we weren't going to hit our target. It's a very dire situation. So de declaring it an emergency brings it to the attention of large corporations and other donors. Megan, you can come up and tell them what's going on with your corporations. We're also very pleased that as part of declaring an emergency today, the city is committing to advocating alongside us to higher levels of government. And so I spend a lot of time meeting with MPs and MPPs. We're now hoping to do some of those together with the mayor and with city councillors as we try and get the message out that food banks, municipalities can't carry this burden alone of the amount of people living in poverty and that the higher orders of government who have responsibilities for those areas of work need to do their part to ensure that charities like us aren't bearing the burden of it. And so right now, as Mayor Parrish says, we are funded by people's generosity, whether it's companies, individuals. And I think, you know, people have not stayed on top of how bad it has become at food banks. You know, it cost, before the pandemic, it cost Mississauga's food bank to feed everybody who needed help in the city two and a half million dollars. Now it costs us nine million dollars to do the same for the growing number of people. And so the need for food banks, the size of food banks, the demand on food banks has grown astronomically. And now it's up to us to um, convince, in many cases, local folks that uh, this is something they need to pay attention to because as more and more folks in our community, as kids are living in poverty, as seniors are living in poverty, we are all gonna feel the ripple effects of having people who aren't able to afford the basic necessities of life. Thank you, Megan, and one last question, Paige. Um, so with that then, uh, declaring it an emergency today, what does that mean in terms of sometimes this can look like a performative measure, but how do you hope that this will create tangible change? Well, already today I've been in touch with colleagues at food banks in other cities across the province. Um, already in the region of Waterloo, they are talking about declaring this emergency as well. They're pushing for the same thing at my, my colleagues in other regions. And we hope to come together to say, you know, X, Y, and Z cities have declared this an emergency. Premier Ford, Prime Minister Trudeau, what, what is your response? How are you going to do this and so I'm just thrilled after 15 years of working together that we're able to do this in a formal way and say you know this has gotten to the point where we can't just keep doing what we're doing we have to try new methods to get this message and this need in front of people who can make a difference thank you Megan we'll now go online to our online questions thank you we have a question from Ish Isha Pawar with Y Media Group uh, hi everyone uh, my question is, uh, are we going to plan any other food assistance programs as well, apart from the food banks, looking at the emergency? Um, at this point, the food bank isn't expanding into any programs. To be honest, if funding is not robust, there may, may be a reason in 2025 for us to be closing programs. So there is a need for additional food supports in the community. Um, the expansion of breakfast programs is gonna be helpful for people as the federal government rolls that program out. And so, but what we'd really like to see is instead of giving people food through a charitable method, let's get money into people's pockets so they can buy it at the regular grocery store. So our advocacy will continue to be for basic income, for improving social assistance programs, and anything that just increases the amount of money people have in their wallet to afford basic needs. Thank you, Megan, for your answer, and I appreciate the efforts of the city to take this initiative. Thank you so much. And that concludes your online questions.
Thank you very much for coming. Uh, that concludes the press conference for today. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, Megan Nichols, M E G H A N N I C H O L L S. I'm the CEO at Food Banks Mississauga. Anna Maria Batista, A N N A M A R I A, Batista, B A T T I S T A. Thank you.